Hello all, welcome to Applications Manager's free training series. Today marks the first part of the series, which is application-centric infrastructure monitoring. Now let's take a look at the agenda for today. First and foremost, we'll be talking about how you can automatically discover components and dependencies across the entire application stack followed by how you can measure key performance metrics across your application infrastructure. Then we'll be talking about how you can utilize AI and ML to detect anomalies, analyze performance trends, and plan capacity. Lastly, we'll also be talking about the various integrations applications manager supports and how you can leverage the most out of them. Let's get started with the first topic for today, which is auto discovering components and dependencies across your entire application stack. Let's start with the story of a real time global financial service provider. So this particular financial service provider is one of our customers. In fact, so this customer had their virtual data center, which comprised of servers that hosted multiple Tomcat MySQL and IIS servers. So due to their complex infrastructure, they were having difficulty in understanding where exactly the issue lay. So in order to understand whether the issue was with the server side or, the, or on the database side or with the entire application stack, they needed visibility. This is exactly where our application discovery and dependency mapping feature came to rescue. Now with a single click, Applications Manager was able to discover all the servers, services, and applications that were running within their IT infrastructure. Now to discover these resources across their IT infrastructure, you can use three methods. First one is bulk discovery, followed by network discovery, followed by virtual infrastructure discovery. Now, bulk discovery uh, is a process using which you can add monitors of the same type in bulk. Say you have a bunch of MS SQL monitors. Once you have a, a CSV file which contains all its configuration details, you'll be able to import it and all these monitors will be added in bulk. The next one is network discovery. Now, network discovery is a process of discovering all the resources in a specified network. It discovers monitors running in the default port only. The third type of discovery is virtual infrastructure discovery, which will help you discover all the VMs within your infrastructure. Now, ideally, there are two types of dependency mapping that can be done with Applications Manager. The first one is server to application dependency. Now, this will display all the applications that are running on a server and will map the applications that are interconnected with each other. The second one is application to application dependency. This displays all the applications that are running on same and different servers and will map the ones that are interconnected. Now, our application discovery and dependency mapping feature will help you discover as well as group resources, establish relationships between them, map them correctly to provide a holistic view of your IT infra infrastructure, assess the health and impact potential of your resources and more. For example, say you have an application which is running on a server A and it is using the database running on server B. So for these two servers, you'll be able to create a relationship map and you'll also be able to view the life status of these applications at the host server as well. Apart from this, this feature will also help you detect and isolate problems if any, and you'll also be able to receive periodic status about your applications in order to make informed decisions. Rather than checking uh, if the host server is down or if the database server is down manually, you'll be able to check and pinpoint to the exact root cause of issue. Now, let me switch the UI to show you how this works. Under settings, under discovery and data collection, click add or discover. Under the add tab, you can see that uh, applications manager supports several technologies. 
This include uh, application servers, cloud apps, converged infrastructure. Uh, you can even customize your monitors in an database servers, ERP, digital experience monitoring, mail servers, middleware or messaging portals, servers, services, VMs, web server and services, and more. So in case you want to know about any of this in detail, you can feel free to uh, drop them draw in the chat, chat panel and we'll be happy to help you. The next thing that we have is a bulk import option. Like we spoke about it, you can choose any particular monitor and you can have that uh, CSV file ready. So once you upload it, all those monitors will be added in bulk. Now we have the discovery option. So I'm just going to show you how it works. So you can just give the name of your discovery here. And you can uh, choose either from the uh, current credentials, or you can even create a new one. And you can also choose the re uh, type of discovery, whether it's going to be a range, CIDR, or VMware based discovery. So based on that, you can provide the IP address range, subnet mask, as well as the port details. So once you're done, you can just either choose to discover all the monitors, or you can also choose to discover and add them. Now I already have a sample for you here. So I'm just going to show you how uh, application discovery and dependency mapping is going to look. So now this is just a sample. As you can see here, you have a Linux server which is connected to your Postgres, Memcache as well as your uh, Java. When you hover over, you'll be able to see the status of this particular monitor. As you can see, the Memcache server is down. So this way you'll be able to understand the health availability and the root cause of an issue, if any. Now, apart from this, we have something known as a monitor group. Now, a monitor group is nothing but a logical group of one or more monitors, and this will provide you a holistic view of your business environment. For example, say the health of an online web application depends on various factors, right? So it might depend on the health of the application server hosting the web application, or it might depend on the availability of the web, web server for accessing the web applications, uh, the database server for storing or getting the required information, etc. right? Now these web applications and services can be grouped together as a single monitor group. So this is exactly what the monitor group option helps you with. You can also choose either uh, to be a monitor group or a web application group. And you can also choose the location from which you want these to be monitored. So once you click create group, it will be automatically created. Now the same goes for web application group as well. So in case you have a payroll application or an e-ticketing business service and you want to view them separately, you can create them as a new web application group and you'll be able to view all the details thoroughly. The next thing that we have is a business service. So you can click use application discovery and dependency mapping and I'm choosing all the available monitors. Now you'll be able to see the business view for the same. You can see what, which uh, server is connected to which application, what is, the, what is the status and so on. So this will give you a clear view of what exactly is going on in your infrastructure. That's it with the discovery and dependency mapping feature. Let's move on to the next topic which is mentioning key performance metrics across your application infrastructure. Now, what happens when an issue usually arises? Now, you usually don't understand where it's coming from, and different teams point to each other, right? The Cloud Ops team might say the issues with the application team. The application team might say the issues with the DevOps team, and the DevOps team may point it out to the network team. And this is now a cycle that never ends, right? 
So how do you actually tackle this challenge? You can tackle this by understanding where exactly the issue emerges from and what exactly constitutes an issue. Now you have several components with respect to your infrastructure, right? You have the hardware component. Now this might be prone to hardware errors and availability problems. And then you have the network component, which might uh, be performing poorly due to excessive network utilization and error rates. And then you have the operating system where uh, it might be performing poorly due to poor provisioning of server and virtual resources. And then you have the application where uh, any kind of slowness or unhandled exceptions might cause disruptions. So for this, you will need to thoroughly understand what are the key metrics you need to track in order to uh, pinpoint to this issue and resolve it. So we are just going to quickly go over what are the key parameters you need to monitor when it comes to application servers, servers as well as databases. So when it comes to application servers, uh, JVM heap usage is one of the key metrics that you need to focus on because this helps you identify the memory intensive parts of the application, detect memory leaks, as well as determine how much memory should be allocated to a Java application. Now, Applications Manager can help you check or identify the current Java usage of your application. If there is any issue or the usage of Java is high, you can create an alert. Apart from this, you can also see the server response time, how long your servers are taking to respond to a particular request. Additionally, you can also monitor the threats generated by your application. If a particular threat utilization goes beyond the set value, a warning can be generated. Now let's move on to servers. Now Applications Manager supports uh, several servers like Windows, Linux, EIX, Solaris, Novel, and so on. So when it comes to servers, it is very important for, uh, for you to monitor your system level performance metrics. Now this can include your CPU, disk, and memory utilization. And you should also uh, need to look at your server availability as well as your uptime metrics. Additionally, you'll also need insight into application level performance metrics. And this can include event logs, processes and services, and more. Now, monitoring event logs will help you better understand how your system is operating and it will also give you insight into the health of your system. Now, in addition to monitoring servers at the process level, uh, this will tell you why the particular server is resource constrained and what exactly is causing the issue. Now, with the help of this clarity, you'll be able to detect when a specific process goes haywire, which might eventually deprive other processes of resources and bring down the overall performance of the server or even the entire infrastructure. Now, without process monitoring, identifying the root cause that trigger these chain of events is close to impossible. Now let's move on to database servers. Now when it comes to database servers, monitoring query performance is imperative. In this, you'll need to look out to identify queries that are taking too long to run, as well as you also need to track what are the frequent queries your database receives. The next thing that you need to monitor is your database connections. You'll actually need to check how many database connections are open, how many are closed, etc. The next metric is backup and jobs. Now, this is very important, right? You need to understand when your last database backup was taken, and you also need to ensure that you receive notifications in case there is a failure uh, with the backups. The last metric that you need to track is the log statistics, as it'll help you identify which transactions have been logged and which are uh, logged, etc. Now, these are just some of the uh, few important metrics when it comes to a database. There are other metrics too. Now, let's take a deeper look with the help of a UI. Now, let's start with our uh, servers. Under the overview tab for Windows Server, 
you'll be able to view the availability and health of the particular server along with the CPU, memory, as well as disk utilization metrics. In case you want to enable processes or services, you can quickly add them. And you'll be able to see the data for the same here. Apart from this, you can also see the see the CPU utilization via breakdown. You can see as per idle time, a CPU utilization by codes, and so on. You'll also be able to see the disk utilization, which will tell you how much uh, of a free mem uh, free disk you have and how much has been utilized. Then you'll also be able to gather the network interface metrics which will tell you their status, the input and output traffic, their health, number of errors occur, and so on. Apart from this, if you've enabled your uh, Windows via WMI mode, you'll also be able to monitor your event log, hardware, schedule tasks, uh, print queue information, and so on. So this is it with respect to your uh, server monitoring. Now let's move on to an application server. I'm going to take an example of a Tomcat server here. So under the overview tab, you'll be able to see the server response time, the server performance, thread usage, class loading, response summary, and so on. You'll also be able to see the memory utilization, memory usage, garbage collection stats, and more. In case you want to compare reports between several metrics, you'll also be able to view the same. The next metric that we have here is a thread pool utilization. You'll be able to see uh, the threads as well as the busy threads, along with the number of threads that are currently running, maximum number of threads used, percentage used, and percentage free, and more. Then under the web tab, you'll be able to see the request statistics in the processing time. Under web applications, you'll be able to see the active se uh, sessions along with the ap application summary details, which include the number of successful requests, failed requests, uh, average by bytes per second, number of rejected sessions, expired sessions, and more. So in case you've enabled servlets, you'll also be able to see the servlets and page performance time. Finally, you'll also be able to view the configuration details of your server. Now let's move on to database. So with this, I'm going to show you an example of an MS SQL database. So under the overview tab, you'll be able to view the health and availability of this particular DB. You'll also be able to view the buffer cache hit ratio and plan cache hit ratio, along with memory usage, buffer manager statistics, cache uh, details, uh, access method details, and more. Under the performance tab, you'll be able to view the top queries by CPU, top queries by input output, top slow running queries. Now, this is a very important metric because this will help you understand which query is actually slowing down your database and you'll be able to optimize and tune the performance of the same. Additionally, you'll also be able to uh, track the blocked queries, uh, top queries by lowest planned reuse, cost of missing indexes, and more. Under the database tab, You'll also be able to view the database details, including data file, log file details, total size, and so on. You'll also be able to go into a particular database and view its uh, configuration details in LIN. Then you have the sessions. This will give you insight into your connection statistics, SQL statistics, database connection details, host and session details, and more. Uh, you'll also be able to view the job details, which will give you insight into the current execution status along with the last run status. Then you have the backup or the restore tab, 
which will help you understand uh, when the last backup was uh, taken. You'll be able to understand that with the help of a backup age metric. Additionally, you'll also be able to tag the replication details, the number of users who are currently uh, connected to the database, uh, the cluster details, always on availability groups, etc. Now let's move on to the next topic for the day, which is leveraging AI and ML to detect anomalies and troubleshoot issues quickly. Now, what happens when an issue occurs? So usually when an issue occurs, an alert is sent, and when the number of alerts pile up, they go overlooked by L1 or NOC team, or sometimes the point of contact might be unsure about what the issue exactly is, right? So how do you save the data? Let's see an example. Say for example that you have an MS SQL server that needs to be backed up every 12 hours, but due to some issues, they haven't been backed up in the last 24 hours. Now, instead of manually scoring through, Applications Manager will help you automate actions via a custom script. The script will associate an alarm with an SQL job action, and this action will be automated whenever your backup page age exceeds a set time. But why exactly do you need this automation? Now, automation helps you filter the noise. So you might have several databases, several servers, and several components, right? And you'll be receiving a lot of alerts from each of them. So you'll first need to understand whether these alerts are even valid in the first place. So this will help you prioritize only the valid alerts. Once you're able to prioritize that, you'll be able to pinpoint to the root cause of the issue, and you'll be able to automatically remedy it with the help of EBE, script, or orchestration. Now, another area where uh, ML helps is with threshold profiles. Now, Applications Manager currently supports static, adaptive, and anomaly threshold profiles. Say you have a Tomcat server where you want to monitor a memory utilization. Now, instead of configuring a static threshold, if you choose an adaptive one, when the current memory utilization deviates from the usual pattern, an alert will be automatically triggered. Now, let's see how this works in the UI. First, let me show you how you can configure the alarms. So, you can go to configure alarms and you'll be able to uh, configure alarms either by monitor, monitor group or even the monitor type. So, you can also configure the health and availability of uh, that particular monitor. And you can also associate thresholds for these attributes. So once uh, you click on the threshold or anomaly, it will be automatically associated with that particular attribute. You can see all the alarms that have been generated here. So uh, this uh, represents that it's a critical uh, alarm. This represents warning and this represents clear. So you'll be able to classify them based on the severity and you'll also be able to view for which uh, monitor the alarm has been generated and for which uh, technician it's been assigned to and the date and time at which they've been assigned to as well. <coughs> so apart from that, we have uh, several actions that we can perform. This includes email, SMS, tap, execute program, cloud action, VM action, uh, DB action, and so on. Now let me show you how you can uh, perform an SQL job action since that's the one we discussed in the example. So here you can give a particular display name and you can select the action type. It could be starting a job, stopping it, or even restarting it. Then you can select the SQL jobs of your choice. So once you see the list of jobs running, you can select and add these jobs. Then you can give the email ID to which you want to receive the notification once this action is executed. And you can choose to execute this action either during the business hours or even outside of it. Now, let me show you how uh, now uh, the threshold profiles work. Now, we can go to new threshold profile and you can either manually set it. 
where you can uh, select that in case if your monitor value is greater than say a threshold limit of uh, 50 you'll have to get a, a severe critical alert so if it's greater than a threshold limit of 30 then it's warning if it's greater than a threshold limit of 10 then it's clear so you'll also be able to provide the messages as well as the number of polls after which you have to receive this uh, alert so that you don't receive junk alerts and uh, you uh, receive only the ones that are actually valid. Then you'll be able to create a threshold profile. Now the next one is the one that we spoke about, which is the adaptive profile. So here you can you choose it as an automatic one or as a manual one. So here you can set the deviation percentage. So this will compare uh, the patterns so uh, it will compare it to the previous patterns and if it deviates from the normal you'll automatically receive an alert now let's see how anomaly profile works so here you can either choose to detect anomalies based on baseline values or even using custom expressions so uh, say for example your first week of january was the best performing week with respect to your cpu utilization now uh, you want to have uh, you want to compare that with your current one. So anytime your current uh, values exceed that of the weak ones, you want to receive an alert. So you can specify the anomaly where you can set the upper limit and lower limit thresholds. And if they are caused, you'll automatically receive an alarm. Now, Applications Manager uses two comparison methods. The first one is uh, compare ring the uh, uh, last half value directly with the baseline value and the next one is comparing the uh, b, uh, values based on corresponding differences with the previous half. So based on your requirements you can choose either of it. Now let's move on to the next topic for today which is leveraging AI and ML to analyze performance trends and plan capacity. Now, Applications Manager supports over 100 plus report types in all of these performance reports. And apart from that, we also help you with capacity planning, which will help you understand uh, whether a particular server is overutilized, underutilized, or it's an ideal. So you'll be able to plan and locate resources based on the same. The next thing that we have is a forecast reports. So these are uh, ML-based forecast reports, which will help you uh, do predictive analysis and uh, give you the historical growth as well as the utilization trends of your servers. So these are some of the report types uh, that we support. At first, we have the availability and health report, and then we have uh, the downtime summary report which will help you understand uh, whether the particular server has been down for a very long time. And then we have the trend analysis report where we can see all the uh, performance of all the uh, important metrics within a single view. Then we have the historical report. Uh, so this will give you the history of how a particular uh, metric is performing. And then we also have the hour of the day and the inventory report which will give you an, uh, a sample into how your uh, metric is performing at each and every hour of the day. And the inventory report will give you insight into uh, all the uh, inventory that is present in your uh, application infrastructure. Now, the next thing that we have here is uh, planning infrastructure capacity. So this is nothing but a capacity planning feature. Now, uh, with respect to capacity planning, we categorize our servers into three types, oversized, undersized, as well as idle servers. Now, an Undersized server is the one which has insufficient resources to handle the workload that it is usually expected to handle. For example, if a web server is running on a virtual machine with only 1 GB of RAM, and if the website receives a lot of traffic, then the server might become overwhelmed and slow down or crash. The oversized server is just the opposite of that of the undersized. Now, an oversized server is the one which is more resources than it needs to handle the workload it is expected to handle. 
For example, if a small company has a dedicated server with 64 GB of RAM and hosts only a single website that receives low traffic, the server may be oversized and a waste of resources, right? Now let's see what an idle server is. The idle server is the one which is not being used at all or is being used well below its capacity. For example, if a company has a backup server that is only used once a week for a few hours, the server might be idle for the rest of the time, which is a complete waste of your resources, right? Now all of these issues at an application level as well as at a server level will pose problems. Capacity planning will help you avoid these scenarios by categorizing the servers. Now these reports will, can be shared with your concerned teams to ensure that resource allocation is done properly, be it in production or other environments. The next thing that we have is a forecast reports. So basically what these will help you is it will help you forecast growth and resource utilization trends. Say for example, you want to understand what will be the disk utilization of a particular Tomcat server in the month of say June 2024. So with the help of a forecast report, uh, you'll be able to understand what its, a disk utilization will be like. Now these reports uh, need sufficient data in order to uh, predict, the, uh, predict how the resource utilization will be in the future. So based on the pattern, they'll be able to predict how uh, your resources might be consumed. And based on this, you'll be able to plan your capacity. The next thing that we have is the dashboards and widgets. Now applications manager comes with three dashboards, the default dashboard, the business uh, view one, as well as the availability dashboard. Now our dashboards also integrate with Grafana and Kibana, which will also help you visualize your data better. You'll also be able to create custom dashboards and you can share it with your uh, specific teams. Now, after config or configuring the dashboard, you can also save all of these settings as a monitor group template. So once you have the particular monitor group template, it can be applied to other monitor groups as well, and it will make it easier for you to create dashboards for all the monitor groups. So additionally, we also have smart widgets. So we have a performance widget, which will give you a snapshot value of a specific monitor's performance metric. And then we have the health and availability and alarm summary widgets, which are quite self-explanatory. And then we have the heat map widget, which displays the severity status for the health and availability of selected monitors. And then we also have uh, the status in downtime widget, which shows the health and availability status of all the monitors for a certain duration. And then we also have the error status widget, which displays the status in time duration for which it takes to collect the data. And then we also have the business view widget and the utility widgets. Now let's uh, take a look at the UI. So under reports, you'll be able to view the at a glance report of monitor groups. So this will basically provide you the availability response time used memory, average processing time, and other details. Then you'll also be able to view the current snapshot of the availability and health reports. You'll also be able to view the alarm summary of a particular monitor group. You can see the total number of alarm occurrences, whether it's critical, warning, or clear. And you'll also be able to see the alarm occurrences based on the monitors. Then you have the response time report, which will help you understand the response time of each of your monitor as well as your monitor groups. And you'll also be able to uh, see the minimum, maximum, average, or the 95th percentile of your response time. In case uh, there is any downtime, this particular report will give you insight into availability. We don't have any downtime as of now, but if you do, you'll be able to see it here. Then you have the trend analysis report.
So you will be able to view the at a glance report uh, for the uh, uh, specific monitor of your choice. You'll also be able to the, uh, see the summary report of the particular monitor. Along with its performance metrics. In case of any downtime, you'll also be able to see the downtime history. So apart from this, we also have an inventory report, which will give you insight into all the resources which are present within your inventory, the poll interval, the category, associated monitor groups, and more. You'll also be able to export them as PDFs or Excel files so that you can share the same with your team. Apart from that, we also have a capacity planning report where you can see this for our undersized servers. As you can see, these are the monitors and you can see whether they're undersized or uh, and for which metric they're undersized. You'll also be able to view notes here so that you can refer and understand how it is performed over a period of time. And you can also uh, configure and change settings based on your requirements. The next one that we have is a forecast report. So here you can see the uh, forecast uh, utilization of your desk servers. So you can see the uh, value for up to two years. So here, as you can see, uh, you can see the desk utilization of your servers up till March 2024. Last, we also have our SLA management feature. Now, when you have your uh, business, you also have to adhere to uh, your SLAs, right? So our, so our SLA management feature will help you give insight into uh, whether your uh, particular um, application is meeting the SLA or not. You'll also get insight into the availability, mean time to repair, mean time before failure, the number of events that have occurred, and more. You'll also be able to see the server SLAs the events that have taken place and you can also create any new SLAs as you want to. Now apart from this, uh, we also have something known as advanced report. So here, uh, this will be able to give you a clear view of for a particular monitor group or a particular audience of your choice. For me, I have created a report for my DBT. So where they'll be able to see uh, the uh, DBs, their uh, associated monitor types, the uptime, the connection uh, statistics, buffer cache ra ratios, cache ratios, number of connections, et cetera, in a single view. So uh, but with the help of this uh, particular advanced report, you will be able to compare, understand, and uh, get an at a glance insight uh, into customized reports. Now let's take a look at dashboards. Now this is how my current dashboard looks like. As you can see, I can view my application discovery and dependency mapping feature here. You can also see the number of monitor groups uh, that are available and the monitors that are in error. You'll also be able to see the health history of these groups along with the performance metric widget, the threshold breakers, uh, the status of the monitors, how many are clear, how many are critical, etc. And you'll also be able to see the same with the help of our heat, uh, heat, uh, heat map widget. And you'll also be able to have a quick glance of the top 10 alarms that have been raised, which monitor type they have been associated with, and you'll also be able to get the infrastructure snapshot of the same. Apart from this, you can also view your business view here. So this is the insight that it will give you. You'll be able to view the health of the monitor as well as the type and what component it's connected with. And you can also have your availability history dashboard. In case you want to create a new dashboard, you can click create now and you can customize it based on your preferences. So you can associate the users who you want to associate this particular dashboard with and only they'll be able to view it. So in case you want to add more widgets, you can customize it via our actions tab and you can, you can even publish this dashboard and generate business dashboards report for the same. Now let's move on to the last topic for the day, 
which is achieving more out of applications manager with built-in integrations. Now, Applications Manager has a direct integrations with uh, several third-party uh, services. This includes Prometheus, ServiceNow, Slack, etc. And we also integrate tightly with our in-house solutions like Alarms1, Analytics Plus, Services Plus, etc. Now, how do these integrations actually help? Now, these built-in integrations will provide end-to-end -end visibility uh, into your application infrastructure. It will also help you reduce any performance bottlenecks, provide better insights, help you uh, initiate efficient reports, as well as help you avoid any SLA breaches. Now, let's go deeper into our integration with Server Displays. Now, with the help of a Service Displays integration, you'll be able to automatically discover all the IT components in the configuration management database of your Service Displays, and you'll also be able to create dependencies amongst them in Applications Manager. You'll also be able to track all the configuration items, CIs in your IT infrastructure, map relationships, and predict the impact of CIs on your business. In case of any modification is made, you'll also be able to view the scene. Now, this integration will also help you automate the process of categorizing, prioritizing, and assigning tickets to technicians and services plus from Applications Manager. So you'll be able to create a ticket, track the change in status of the particular ticket, and all of its updates until it's finally resolved. So this will help you ensure that no ticket is unattended. Now, the next integration that we have is a Prometheus integration. Now, we support Prometheus for both Tomcat as well as OpenShift. So, with the help of this integration, you'll be able to automatically discover your Tomcat as well as your OpenShift servers. And this will save you the manual task of uh, having to put in the IP address of the host servers every time. So, we have uh, two methods by which we do this. The first one is the exposed API method, and the second one is the SSH option. Now let's go to the UI to take a look at the same. Go to settings. Under product settings, click add on settings. So I've already added a sync with a service displays module for you. So I'll show you how it looks like. So this is how your SDP. Uh, UI looks like. So under this, you can go to request. I've already raised an alarm. So you can see the details of the alarm that you've raised. And in case uh, the status has changed, you can update the same. You can uh, update the level, mode, group, the technician with which it's assigned to. Uh, in case it is associated with a particular project, you can also uh, give the details for the same. In case you have any impact details, you can also provide the same. Apart from this, you can also add notes. Uh, you can also uh, give details of your resolutions, tasks, checklists if you have any. And you can also get insight into your work logs, time analysis, history of that particular ticket, and so on. So this will give you clear insight into how, uh, how this particular ticket is even being handled. So in case you also want to share this particular request, you'll also be able to, to do the same. Now let's see how this works under your CMDB as CIs. So you'll be able to see all of your CIs here. So I've created a few CIs for my application servers. So you can click on this uh, particular configuration item and you can view the dependency map. Uh, you can also add a particular relationship. You can add an attribute of your choice here. You'll be able to see the CI type, how much impact it has on the business, what are the configuration versions used, and so on. Under relationships, you'll also be able to add relationships if you want to. You'll also be able to view it as a list tree as well as as a cluster view. In case this particular ticket has a CI has a history, you'll also be able to view the same. 
So you'll be able to perform this for your application servers, database servers, uh, web servers or services and more. So this is how our integration with services plus works. We integrate with uh, the on-premise cloud as well as the MSP version of services plus. Now the next integration that we have is a Prometheus integration. So as we discussed before, this particular Prometheus integration has two modes of data collection. One is the exposed Prometheus API and the other one is curl through SSH. Now exposed Prometheus API will help you directly access the Prometheus URL to collect data for metrics and discovery of Tomcat as well as OpenShift monitors. You will be able to choose this option when your Prometheus URL is accessible throughout the network. And the second option is SSH. This will allow applications manager to access the Prometheus URL only in the system in which Prometheus is deployed. Now this option is viable if you've deployed Prometheus as a pod in a container environment and are using the Linux targets. You'll also be able to provide the Prometheus server details and you can provide the type of authentication whether it's basic service account token and so on. And you can either choose to discover and monitor all your all your servers or you can choose to just discover them, monitor specific instances or even pause the discovery in total. You'll also be able to mark uh, the monitor is down, unmanage or delete the monitor uh, based on your choice. Apart from this, uh, we also have webhook integrations with other third-party services. Uh, you can evoke any REST API actions or webhook actions you want under the Actions tab here. Now, additionally, I'd like to let you know that we also have mobile applications for Android and iPhone. So, these mobile applications will help you uh, get an overview of all the monitors, monitor groups and subgroups. And it will also give you the availability and health status of the same. So you'll be able to uh, receive critical alerts on the go. So now that we've come to the end of today's session, let's have a quick recap of what we discussed. So we discussed how we can auto discover components and dependencies across the entire IT stack. How we can measure key performance metrics across your application infrastructure. We also saw how uh, adaptive thresholds, uh, AI-based uh, reports, etc. can help you detect anomalies as well as plan your capacity effectively. Lastly, we also saw how Applications Manager seamlessly integrates with uh, Service Express as well as Prometheus. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. Have a nice day.